Next up on my list of things I would like to add to this vehicle is a dash cam. So, what I'm thinking is I want to put a dash cam up right about here and I can run the cables across the roof. The dash cam I've selected is the Rexing V1P 4K. It's a nice mid-range model. Um, has the ability to record both front at 4K and rear at 1080p at the same time um, with some other nice monitoring features, etc. Now the camera comes with this 12 volt adapter, but that would be really kind of awkward to have that, you know, trailing up across the dash and up to the webcam. So instead of that, what I did is I got this uh, optional hardwire kit, and what this will do is this will tie directly into the fuse box uh, and power the camera continually even when the car is turned off, so you can use it in sentry and security mode. Now the fuse box that I'm going to tie into is underneath the driver's side uh, steering wheel down here. I just need to open that. So basically I just need to find a channel from the fuse box up along the frame over there, across the top, and over to the web, uh, the dash cam there. Now for the rear camera, that's going to be a little more complicated. The rear camera, I've still got to go across the top there, but I've somehow got to get it to the back. <laughs> So I've been looking, and it looks like I can run it across the top there, and maybe up to the cabinets, and we'll have to take the cabinets apart to see what I can run behind the cabinets, all the way to the back of the vehicle. So as far as mounting location goes, I think I want this side here, so it sits up high, and I want it below the sweep of the windshield wipers, so that the windshield wipers will keep it clear. I thought of a couple other places you might mount it. I didn't want to mount it below the mirror because that starts to obscure the driver's view a little bit. Um, you could potentially mount it down low. The Dodge Ram has a very low uh, window, uh, but then it'll start to interfere with the windshield wipers. There's a small gap there. You might mount it between those two windshield wipers, uh, but I think it'll be better up high here. So that's where I'm going to go with. This is the hardwire mount, mounting kit. So you can see the way this is going to work is it's actually going to plug into the fuse box directly, um, replacing a fuse in the fuse box or finding an open spot, uh, and then it runs it off to the webcam. So this is the part that I'm going to have to funnel up and around the frame. Uh, this will just sit inside the panel next to the fuse box, and these plug in directly to the fuse box. They've included also this handy little uh, tool, which I can use to kind of push the wire back in up around uh, the frame molding. So that's pretty cool. It looks like the fuse box here has just a couple of Phillips screws that you can pull off here to get access to the fuse box. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so unscrewing the screws, they actually stay attached, which is nice. You can just remove the panel. And this is what the fuse box looks inside here. So. Next, we just need to hunt down and find the right fuses to swap out and replace, and we should be good to go. Then it looks like, let's see here, yeah, if we funnel the cable down here, we can get out the bottom of the fuse box here, and it looks like there's some, uh, some nice molding over here that we can use. Funnel the cable in right up alongside the dashboard right there. Well, I've got the cable installed. You can see it comes out there. It fits up into the roof very nicely, except for around this spot right here in the mirror. It doesn't quite tuck in. I can't figure out how to do that. The uh, trim is just too tight to the mirror mounting. But otherwise, pretty seamless. Goes over here. Um, you can tuck it right down in here. Follow the weather stripping all the way down. And under and up into the fuse box compartment. The manual, which isn't terribly helpful, uh, tells us that uh, this wire needs to go to ground, so I'll need to connect this to ground somewhere on the, the body of the vehicle. Uh, and the red wire goes to a fuse that is off when the vehicle is off, and the yellow wire goes to a fuse that is on when the vehicle is on. So I'll need to use a voltmeter to quickly test which of these fuses uh, meet that requirement. And then 
the fuse jumper itself, it looks like it already has a fuse in place for the webcam and you just put the other fuse that you replace into this little hole here so it continues to operate for whatever that circuit was supposed to do. After a bit of playing around, what I think I've found is the bottom row of fuses here are all always on, even when the car is off, and the top row of fuses here are switched. So we want to connect the uh, red wire to one of the top row and the yellow wire to one of the bottom row. And then the ground, so there's this handy little metal plate at the bottom there that has ground, but we need a little screw attachment. Uh, and I found under here, there's a little screw attachment to the body that is a good ground, so we're going to screw it on there. Here is the final fuse box with the fuses all tucked in, all out of the way. Nice, you can't see any wires. I've got the ground attached to the little post down there pretty securely. So the power is all set. Next step was to mount the mounting plate to the windshield using the double sticky tape that they have. Make sure you do get the T-slot in the correct orientation uh, so that it can slide on up and down. Then you can just take the camera here and snap it in. Let's plug it in here over at the side. And there it goes. We are plugged in and functional. So, all set. Next step is to install the rear camera, which will be a little trickier. Another problem I ran into with the webcam after running around with it for a few days is that mounting it up high on the windshield like this, you end up picking up a lot of glare off of the dashboard reflecting off the windshield. So in order to fix that, what I'm going to try and do is create a little bit of a shield that I can mount around here that'll fit up flush against the windshield and prevent the glare from reaching the camera lens. So, project for another day. Today we're going to focus on just getting the wiring run all the way to the back of the van. Now to run the wire, I'm going to run the same way I ran the previous wire, just tucking it up along the top of the windshield and then over there toward the side post. Got the pieces attached to make sure that they uh, stay up there. I used one of those handy little sticky clips that they provided. Uh, interestingly, the wires shove up above the windshield really easily, except for right above the mirror here, where they don't want to go in at all. So I used another one of those little clips just to hold them up tight against the mirror. Then ran along the surface over here and over to the corner post. So here in the corner post, since I want this thing to go to the back, instead of running down underneath the trim right here, I'm going to run up underneath the trim, across the window here, and back toward the cabinets. Okay, next up is to get back into the wire channeling behind these cabinets here. So my plan is to, now that I've got the wire run under here, I'm going to go ahead and run it up alongside here and then in the cabinets themselves you can see I've got this felt backing where a lot of the wiring runs back there. So if I can get up the wall and then behind there I should be able to run this cable all the way to the back of the van. So let's go ahead and pull off this felt backing on both of these cabinets. Okay, so you can see pulling the felt down and you don't even have to take it all the way off. Uh, you can see all the wire cabling back there. Interestingly, Airstream left a lot of room back there. Um, not sure why, because it kind of wastes a lot of the usable space in the cabinet. Uh, but there should be plenty of room to run all kinds of cables if we need to. So running it past the bathroom is going to be interesting. We'll probably have to use a cable puller and uh, run it through to the other side in the cabinet in the back of the bathroom. So as I expected, uh, once you get it up here alongside the cabinet, uh, you can get it up this crack and around in behind the cabinet and it comes out right there. So then you can run it through the cable. Here we are in the back, so I'm going to need to pull off the same felt backing right here and see if I can fish that cable through past the shower. Should be able to. There's the panel off and uh, always remember to take pictures of everything you see uh, just in case you need to get there again. 
and I've successfully fished past the uh, shower using one of my favorite fishing tools, a tip measure. It's kind of handy because it tells you how far you've gone and it's a relatively stiff wire that you can use to pull things. So that's gone through all the way to the other side of the shower. There it is. So now we just need to attach our rear cable to that and pull it all the way through. And just in case I want to pull something else through again, I'll attach a string to the wire too that I can use to pull stuff in the future. So that'll be handy. And there it is all pulled through. Uh, Rexing included a nice long rear camera cable, but this is a really long van. So I had to buy a six foot extension to uh, get all the way to the back here. So I'll go ahead and plug that in now and keep running it through the cabinets. Looking at the back here, I'm going to see if I can avoid pulling off the back of that cabinet and just fish it through directly past that cabinet. Because those things are kind of a pain to take off. they got a lot of screws in there and they're very tight, which is a good thing. Looks like there's this little cover panel here, which I'm probably going to want to go through anyway. Uh, maybe come out those little slotted holes right there and then mount the camera right in the back window over here. Well, I ended up having to pull this panel anyway because uh, Airstream decided to uh, mate this very closely to the edge of the van. There's only like a couple millimeters of gap between the edge of the van metal and this uh, wood backplate. So that wasn't enough to run my cable through. But I did find there is a hole through the van chassis that goes through to the back cavity. If you follow this cable bundle, it's just below that. Uh, and you should be able to get through. So that's what you want to do if you want to avoid drilling a hole through the wood, which is something I would like to avoid. Anyway, you can take a look at the inside cabling here. You can see this is the pre-wire for some of the uh, cellular network uh, and antennas. And uh, there is the final installation. It turns out that the six foot cable is just barely long enough to connect all the way out as far as it needs to extend with the door in the fully extended position. So rather than running it through here, which it turns out these slots are too small anyway, I just put a little notch in the panel here um, so the cable feeds through there. There is the final camera all hooked up. The cable is just long enough that at full extension and the door is around the side, it works. And it seems to fold up reasonably well. I don't think there's much danger of that catching in the door. And green light's on, it's working and recording. Everything's on and functional now, so uh, I'll go ahead and zip tie up some of the cables just to clean things up and then uh, put everything back together. One quick addition after using this for a few days. What I found is even though the dashboard is black, uh, there's quite a bit of reflection of the dash in the lower half of the video, which kind of makes it less desirable. So what I decided to do is make a little bit of a reflection shield. So I took some uh, black felt and used a little bit of wire to stiffen it to make it in a little bit of a U shape like this. And I've glued that to the bottom of the dash cam like that, which fits up snug against the windshield. And it basically cuts out all of the reflections. So pretty cheap and easy mod, improve the video quality on your dash cam. There is the final webcam install with front and rear recording simultaneously and the little felt shield to prevent the surface reflections.